Oh, sh**. Somebody done pissed your girl off. Some mother Wanna talk shit about me? Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're doing another deep dive and taking an extensive look into the lives of the infamous Thousand Pound Sisters, Amy and Tammy Slate. For almost a decade, these two have been sharing their lives, antics, hauls, and everything in between on the internet. While they are probably best known for their viral videos, these two are always laughing and making jokes out of pretty much everything. But their lives have not always been fun and games. Because underneath all the smiles lies the truth. Their lives have had many tragic twists and turn of events that they have painfully had to endure. Whether you're Team Tammy, Team Amy, or maybe both, it may be easy to forget their entire story. From their complicated sister rivalry, infamous scandals, health scares, family conflicts, denials, and relationship drama, we have a lot to cover. So today, let's explore the tragic real life story of the Thousand Pound Sisters. We from Kentucky. Of course, a Kentucky accent. A Kentucky accent and what it's country? The country bride. Tammy and Amy Slayton started their first joint YouTube channel in January 2011. One of the first videos on their channel was titled "Meet the Slayton Sisters." which was filmed after borrowing their stepdad's camera. And not even five seconds into the video, you will see that their sibling rivalry has been front and center since the beginning. Hey y'all, this is me. Uh, our blog, uh, our blog, uh, 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 sisters. <laughs> Not sister, sisters. There's two of us. Yeah, I missed those. Oh well. <laughs> and. I'm bullshit. In the beginning, you can see that Tammy felt comfortable being behind the camera as opposed to being in front of it. Okay. Anyway, it's Tammy's turn. No. Voice her. <laughs> hey, Tammy. Uh, what you doing? Sitting here. It's a far cry from how she is on her channel now, and also in hindsight, crazy to think that this shy individual would one day star in her own show on a major TV network in a few short years. Even from the beginning videos, Amy was definitely more outgoing and she really loved the spotlight. Her next statement would also prove to be a little bit of foreshadowing. Um, I don't, okay, this is Tammy's turn, yeah. my bad, and, you know me, I love the spotlight. They were obviously new to filming, but they seemed really excited to start their YouTube journey. One thing that they loved to do was discussing what was going on in their lives, and one video that was posted shortly after their last discussed an important topic about them feeling misunderstood and they also wanted to share their experience with how online bullying was currently affecting them. To be bullied like myself, people have told me I need to Really? What's the whole point of that? They come up with some better names. Well, Milo, come on now. Yeah, but no, we yeah. Really? Just 
Now, to play devil's advocate, many of their viewers had grown frustrated with Tammy and Amy's lack of concern about their health and their size. And many of their viewers felt that the girls were in denial and they were trying to provide a wake up call. Through it all, they seem to always have more fans than detractors, and many people loved how down to earth they were. Yeah. Not off the bull. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're conscious, damn it. And yes, indeed they are. Conscious. Believe it or not, their channel started out really, really small and stayed really small for about two years. <laughs> Wait here. That was me. <laughs> 51 subscribers! Yeah! Oh my god! That is so amazing! Little did they know that in a few short months from now, two back to back events, one good and one unbelievably horrible, would end up changing the course of not only their channel, but also their lives from this point forward. The last few months of 2014 ended up being a pretty important time for the Slayton sisters. For starters, they were really getting more comfortable vlogging and opening up to the camera. Even Amy felt comfortable enough to discuss a medical condition involving her eyes. I am blind. I am literally blind. Yes, I can see out one of my eyes. Barely. Barely. But anyway... By the time I'm 35, I'm supposed to be completely blind. It's not right. My eye goes this way, one of them goes this way. It's, it's not right. It's, birth, it's a birth defect. Yeah, I was born that way. And this wasn't their only open discussion about health. Remember when Tammy mentioned this? I'm not a diabetic. So, I mean, we're cool. Well, a few months later, she was comfortable enough to open up about her health even more. And in particular, the subject of her breathing tubes came up. About us, well, me, doing the blog review. And in the video, I was actually wearing a oxygen tube, real word for it, terminology, is cannula. And I wanted to kind of explain why I was wearing it. And the reason being is almost a year ago, I was diagnosed with a blood clot in my lung. I'm all to a point with your health. We see a doctor in the record. I'm not a diabetic. So I mean, we're cool. And I'm sitting here smoking, but I'm okay. I don't need it all the time. I'm supposed to. I'm not listening. <laughs> but I kind of want to you know, venture out and like try to wean myself off the oxygen by myself without the doctors killing me because I'm hard headed like that. It's not because I'm overweight, it's because of the blood clot. That's it. I'm fine. 
I'm breathing. <sighs> Amy's right there. Hey, y'all. I am to a point happy with myself. I do want to lose weight and better my life and get off the oxygen and everything and get away from the blood clot that I have in my lung and just continue staying out of the hospitals. Yeah, so... I'm yeah, done. we need to lose weight. We healthy, we just, you know, fat. I don't know. <laughs> now, anyone who has been watching A Thousand Pound Sisters or any of her more recent videos can see her wearing the breathing tubes. But I personally didn't realize that she was using these tubes way back so many years ago. To me, her explanation seems as though she is stuck in denial about her health, which is a constant struggle and a battle that she continues to fight on a daily basis. So back then, the two were single and they loved to discuss their dating life and gripe about dating horror stories. Are you single? Yes. <laughs> Technically, yes. I'm bisexual though. I'm straight. I like me some We do not want to see your prices. Okay? I just met you. We don't want to see your privates. Okay? Rolling to the max. To buy yourself as curvy, fat, thick, plus size, heavy, apple, or fat, pretty hot and tempting. Well, I'm pretty hot and tempting. I'm a thief. I'm fat. I'm just, I'm just plus size. What's your body shape? Hourglass, spoon, rectangle. Triangle, pear, or apple? I'm a reptile. What are you? I think I'm more of an hourglass. Harry knows it's a guy. I'm not nothing to know that, but he's a little oh, One interesting topic of discussion focused on feederism. Which is interesting because it's definitely a topic that we are going to discuss later on in depth, so stay tuned for that. Like, why would I want you to call me fat if we trying to be in a relationship? Come on now, you should hurry. Well, he's in the feederism, which it means, which means he likes fat girls to get bigger and eat and eat and eat. Yeah, and eat. but don't you call them pigs? But to him, but him calling them piggy or fatty is telling them that they're beautiful. That's not, that's, no, yeah, that's, that's why I try to tell him, and I like push him away because, like, I told him, it's straight up selfish. Like, daddy will do whatever daddy wants, and I'm like, forget you. The last picture he sent me was like, you can, you can't find nobody better than me, you fat pig, or something like that. And I was like, oh, oh, oh uh, if I want somebody, I will get them. As close as these sisters are, my initial thought is that they would consider themselves best friends, but I was really shocked to hear Tammy's view on this. Uh, who's your best friend? Myself. My best friend lives across the street. She knows who she is. It's really sad to think that she feels so alone and that she is her own best friend. I found her answer really insightful, and it gives us a glimpse into how Tammy really feels isolated and lonely, even in the presence of her family. So things were progressing with their YouTube channels, and then they made a decision to post a video recreating a popular challenge called the Chubby Bunny Challenge. Today we are doing the Chubby Bunny Challenge with Marshmallow putting in your mouth. Do not chew, do not swallow, and say chubby bunny. Chubby bunny. Excuse me. 
And this video took off like wildfire. It was an instant viral hit, and they received a whole lot of attention to their channel because of it. Things seemed to be going really well for the two, and they were on cloud nine from their recent popularity. However, that time was short-lived because a few months later, Amy would make a video appearing all alone without Tammy by her side. Just do an update on how Tammy's doing. A week ago today, she got took by an ambulance to the hospital about an hour away from her. Uh, she wasn't doing good. Well, come to find out it was her gallbladder. Her gallbladder was hot. So gallbladder surgery doesn't seem like it would be too much of a serious procedure, but she was in the hospital for over two months recovering and even throughout the Christmas holiday. And that year, they both experienced Christmas very differently. Tammy sent her fans a Christmas video update this one to say hi and I'm hoping y'all got whatever you wanted for Christmas and some. And watch the Christmas store. It's just been on all day. The one where it says, you'll shoot me all y'all kids. Say hi. Thank you about y'all. And um, Wish y'all Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. While Amy spent her Christmas alone, at home, in her bedroom, crying and worried about Tammy. Little did they know that in a few months, so much would change because brewing in the background and slowly bubbling to the surface was a huge scandal that was about to emerge involving an alleged scam. Also, these sisters would soon officially part ways with their joint YouTube channel and would instead opt to post content on their own individual YouTube channels. And one of Tammy's first solo videos would be titled Spilling the Tea, which revealed some shocking accusations about Amy. I don't know what Amy's telling everybody, but I'm, I mean, I'm going to, you know, lay that out of bed. I mean, what, what happened? So by the end of January 2015, Tammy was released from the hospital and the girls made a welcome home video. We will talk. Yes, she's home. And that's how much she lost. 141. These two continued to do videos together between January and April. And an important note with this video, 
Little did they know that three days from now, tragedy would fall onto this family once again. Right now. <laughs> Now, this video was pretty lighthearted. The girls were goofing around. There was some eating. There was some answering of questions. A pretty chill night. And if there is any humor to be had, you can find it in the last few seconds of this video before they signed off for the night. Hey, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. What's going on? Nobody's out here either. No! Three days later, on April 25th, 2015, Amy released a video giving an update on Tammy. Yesterday, at 10 a.m., Tammy went into the hospital. She has the boat and she can't breathe. Last night, and they put Tammy on life support. Her lungs are given out on This was tragic news, as being on life support is extremely serious, and you can see how visibly upset Amy is right now. This was a really stressful time for the Slayton family because not only was Tammy going through some very major medical issues, but so was their mother. According to Amy, her mom was supposed to have surgery but postponed it due to Tammy's unexpected visit to the hospital. Their mother had been needing knee surgery for over 16 years and finally had her opportunity to get the surgery. But then these tragic events with Tammy happened. So as we all know, Amy is pretty much the jokester in the group. But on this particular day, she was really candid about her feelings and she wanted the audience to know how much Tammy really meant to her. Y'all know we fight. We been, we tell each other we each other. but we don't. We love each other. <laughs> Amy also explained how Tammy's medical bills were getting to be extremely taxing on the family. I know she she is on a medical card. The medical card will not cover all of the bills. <laughs> is taking all of our checks just to make it, make it through. <laughs> and if you can remember, Amy actually was crying on Christmas Day about the family struggles with money and how they were using a lot of it to pay for Tammy's medical bills for her first hospital stay with gallbladder surgery. I wish that I could have a bunch of money. According to Amy, she set up the GoFundMe because her family was going to need funds for two possible scenarios with two different outcomes. As Amy explained, if they went with the best case scenario, Tammy survives and the family will still have a hefty sum of medical bills to pay. Or worst case scenario, Tammy passes away and the cost for the extra large coffin and the funeral expenses would still need to be paid as well. I set up a, a trust, a GoFundMe account. If y'all, 
if y'all can do that, baby, they go die. Oh, I'll be so happy. You tell me being so big if something does happen. Her coffin is gonna cost them more because they have to triple the size of the coffin. For you to understand the gravity of the situation, Amy explained that as she was currently speaking, the hospital was putting Tammy into a medically induced coma. They are putting Tammy to sleep. She will be paralyzed. And so she will not be awake. But she did write that she is a fighter. That she will, well, she didn't write this book. She wrote, I'm a fighter. And she explained that while her family was hopeful about her miraculous recovery, they believed that Tammy's thought process may have been a little delusional and that she didn't fully grasp the gravity of the situation. I don't think she realized how bad she really is. So after this initial video, Amy would occasionally update concerned fans about her situation with Tammy, and it seemed like more and more people had questions about the GoFundMe. And I think a lot of the confusion was brought on because not everyone watched her entire video, and instead they were just directed to a GoFundMe page, which stated that the money was needed for Tammy's funeral. So of course, people are going to be confused and feel misled about the whole ordeal. And on top of that, Tammy ended up pulling through and survived, which just added to more confusion because many people thought she had died and that they were contributing to a funeral. And so there was a lot of confusion with many of the generous donors. There ended up being a serious backlash at Amy during this time. And Tammy, once she was released from the hospital, decided to create her very own YouTube channel to tell her side of the story and to create her own content. So we really haven't gone in depth yet about their sibling rivalry, but we will be touching on that very soon. But for now, it's important to note how Tammy could not contain her glee for the backlash that Amy was receiving. I love the attention. <laughs> when y'all tell me I'm better than Amy, Oh my God, that just, that's, that just, <laughs> that melts my heart. <laughs> Cause I'm not used to it. I mean, so everybody's like, Amy's so great, Amy's this, Amy that. Man. Aside from that, she really wanted to take this opportunity to tell her side of the story and to distance herself from this current scandal. First, she gave an account of exactly what happened to her on that dreadful day that she was remitted back to the hospital. Basically, I think it was April 22nd, 2015. I woke up and I couldn't breathe. Like, bad. Like, I really couldn't breathe. I went to the hospital in the ambulance. Another nurse, he, the, the guy nurse, was doing something behind me and on the bed. And another, a female nurse came in and she was helping me put on an oxygen. On oxygen. And after that, I don't remember anything. Apparently, I passed out. My oxygen dropped down to 17 and I woke up three and a half weeks later on life support. I about died that night. Literally, about died. And then I think the next night or two nights later, I'm not sure, but I about died again that same week because of pneumonia. I had it that bad. 
The seriousness of this situation, once explained by Amy, was definitely confirmed by Tammy in this video. She was definitely in a fight for her life at the time, saying that she was basically close to death's door. Now, it's my opinion that Amy is more vocal about her feelings and that Tammy is usually the reserved one. But she got pretty emotional when discussing her family in this video. A day or two went by and my sister Amanda came in and I never forget how happy I was to see her. I don't know if I would have made it without my family. I love my family. Don't get me wrong. I'm sorry. Um. Also in this video, it's important to note that she discussed her love, who she mentioned was from North Carolina. Now, could this possibly be Jerry? Whoever it was, he was sending her a soft drink to try and she ended up doing a review of this in a later video. I got a friend that's gonna send me some cheer wine from North Carolina. I've never had it because we can't get it here in Kentucky. And I'm gonna review that. Actually, he's kind of my boyfriend, but yeah. Anyways, he knows who he is. That's my heart. Tammy let everyone know that she was pissed about Amy creating a GoFundMe account. And in my opinion, Tammy was mostly upset because she felt as though Amy had given up on her. And she was more offended by that notion than the actual GoFundMe. I had to walk. I had to relearn how to eat. I couldn't click the remote. And when I found out Amy did the whole GoFundMe thing, believe me, I was mad, like pissed. Because from one, I knew I wasn't going to die. I knew it in my heart. And two, I didn't want help. We, we could do it, we can do it on our own. We're, I'm not the person, I, not the person, to want to ask for help like that. I mean, I appreciate, don't get me wrong, I do appreciate all the love that you, you all give me. So Amy did use, I guess, at the time she did use the money to pay bills, but she did pay back the people that she got money from, even though people are still saying, oh, she scammed them, oh, she's doing this, oh, she's doing that. I don't know. I was trying to clear the air, let y'all know what really happened. And from Amy's point of view, Tammy didn't understand how serious her condition had become. So this go for a bit, you know, will be for Tammy's view. If she does, she's not dead yet. So please pray that she gets better. Please pray that we will not have this funeral. And when she gets home, the money will go to help us pay off our medical bills. And, oh, she won't be coming home. She'll be back to nurse home to make her lose weight. She has made a hundred pounds since she was in the nursing home last time. These two had very different opinions of what is a dire health emergency and what is not. As you recall, Amy was hoping for the best for Tammy, but at the same time, she was preparing for the worst as well. 
This whole scandal really reduced the amount of support that people had for these two. And it would take a long time for them to slowly and steadily repair their online reputations. In the meantime, these two pressed ahead and kept posting video after video. And as time went on, they would upload some pretty revealing videos detailing the struggles from inside their family. And Tammy in particular revealed some pretty heartbreaking and disturbing details about the toll on her mental health while living with certain members of her family. So one thing we haven't touched on yet is the dynamics within the Slayton family, and especially their lives as children in their small Kentucky town. As we all know, our impressionable years have a huge impact on our attitudes and outlook in our adult life. So for starters, according to both Tammy and Amy, genetically, their family is larger than most. Big people running our families is genetics. As a young child, their mom worried about Tammy because she was very withdrawn, quiet, and did not like socializing with the other children. I remember being 10 years old and my mom taking me to a therapist because I didn't want to play with the other kids. I didn't want to take a bath. I, didn't, I was withdrawn. I was by myself. I was 10. And then when I was 12 or 13, it was 12 when my grandma passed away. And that just made me spiral out of, con even more out of, even more into depression. Yeah, me too. And then, being 13, not having any friends, you're, you see your other classmates, linking up and having kiss you know kissing and hugging and you wish you had that but you didn't tammy even opened up more about her struggles with mental health in particular her various stays at mental institutions i've been to a sale asylum like four times the last time i went to a sale asylum was when prince passed away oh my god you so, as Tammy stated, both girls were overweight kids, and we already know that children can be cruel and love to pick on anyone that does not fit in with the masses. The girls gave several accounts of how they were treated in school. All my life I've been bored. Well, she has too. <laughs> All my life we've we've been bullied. It didn't get real, real bad until probably high school. People would, in high school, people would push us. They would, well, push me. I don't know about you. I can't speak for you. They pushed me. They throw money at me. Sorry, I just don't know how to turn off a notification. They throw little pennies and nickels and dimes, stuff like that at me. I told them once they don't keep, they uh, throw the money at me, throw the dollar bills. <clears throat> throw the dollar bills, I'm serious. Tammy also recalled other cruel jokes that kids would commonly play on her. They also take plastic bottles and they poke a hole in the top of the lid. I remember this. And they would squirt, put water in and squirt it. Uh, well, water. Yeah, as you would walk down the hallway, it rain. So it would be, what a bitch, what a bird. There would be two, at least two boys. Well, I mean, there was hundreds, but there would be two people, and one guy would be looking at you, and the other would be in the locker, and then the one that would look at you'd be like, "Hey, Tammy, so and so wants to be with you," or shot my cat. And when the buddy turned around, you're like, oh, no, 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 you stupid crap like that. She also recalled that the adults, including teachers and the principal, really did not intervene when she made complaints about how she was treated by the other students. See, if you go and tell the teacher, well, in our school, 
They weren't doing nothing. They talked. Just leave them alone. Do something about it. You go and tell the principal, they bring him in the office. You pick on so and so, now go on and tap back to your room. Do something about it. People nowadays, you can't be doing that. And on top of all of this, she started having health problems at a relatively young age. I, when I was, I think I was in high school, is when I found out I had a thyroid problem. I don't remember, I think it's hyperthyroid. I don't remember. But I could eat a bite of like an apple. I'm gonna just use an example. I can eat about an apple, and apples are healthy, you know? They're supposed to help you lose weight. And I would gain weight just off an apple, like eating off, you know, eating that bite of apple. I would gain weight off an apple. So we went to the doctor and we were like, well, she's either got diabetes, and I didn't, or she got a thyroid problem, and I did. So they put me on thyroid medicine and um, all this other stuff. So from everything I've read and seen, I think it's a safe assumption to believe that both Tammy and Amy had pretty rough childhoods. And while it's apparent that they love their mother, one can only sense that there is a lot of tension and pain from their relationship with her. And a lot of issues seem to carry over into adulthood as they both live with their mother up until their early 30s. In so many of Tammy's videos, she would talk about how she needed to get out of her mother's house. And it was really starting to affect her negatively and she explained her heartbreaking situation. I mean, I don't overeat now, but I'm stressed out because I'm always on the fence about my family. Some of y'all know they're physically, I'm not going to lie, they're physically and sometimes mentally, so, no, let me rephrase that, they're mentally and sometimes physically. So time was getting pretty dire for Tammy. And as unhealthy as this situation sounded, I think she started to realize that it was in her best interest to get out of that house as quickly as possible. But she felt hopeless because she was out of options. But I'm like, what's the point? I really want to wait until I can like move out of here, but it don't look like it's happening anytime soon. Cause like, I'd rather die than be living here. I have nowhere else to go. I cannot live with family. We kill each other. <laughs> and, uh... But thankfully, a few years later, she was finally able to move out. I believe she bounced around between several family members, including some of her brothers and sisters, and then she eventually moved in with Amy. Tammy recalled how drastically different life was once she moved out of that house. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. When I lived with my mom, I gave up. I had completely gave up. So being in the hospital back in April was the last straw. Like, I had to. Don't get me wrong, I do love my mom, but I was just completely fed up with living there and they didn't seem to want to help me get an apartment because they retarded me being there or whatever. I don't know, but we just kept fighting and it's just a better situation with me being here, kinda. I love my mom, don't get me wrong, but moving away from that that was just one of the best things i could ever do so let's go more in depth with the love-hate relationship between tammy and amy my name's tammy oh amy that's my sister would do you like your sister <laughs> i mean I'm, 
You can love your sister or your brother or your auntie or your uncle, but you don't have to like them. Now, of course, as we all know, sibling rivalry is a thing. And anyone with siblings knows that it's a natural part of life. But in Tammy and Amy's case, their dynamics borders on unhealthy. There are still fights between me and Amy, but we're sisters. I mean, we fought like cats and got cats and dogs when we were little. Well, we beat each other with baseball bats, metal baseball bats. We even had wood ones too, but I love the attention. <laughs> when y'all tell me I'm better than Amy, oh my God, that just, that's just, that just, <laughs> that melts my heart. <laughs> Cause I'm not used to it. I'm used to everybody's like, Amy's so great, Amy's this, Amy that. <laughs> so if you watch the show, you know that Tammy eventually ends up living on her own. But there was a point that she lived with Amy, and by the sounds of it, it was also a very contentious situation, as she jokes about here. I'm out of my mom's house. That was my biggest thing. I don't live with her anymore. That was another big <laughs> I love you, but you get my nerves. Good, good. Oh, my nerves too. Good. You know my nerves too. Yeah. Well, the tension between these two didn't end here. Big changes to their relationship as sisters and friends were in store because around this time, Amy was getting serious with her now husband, Michael. The free time that she once spent primarily with Tammy was now spent with Michael and people started to question if Tammy was starting to get jealous because Michael was monopolizing Amy's time. So before Amy was officially Amy Slayton Halterman, and before the creation of Baby Gage, she would show off her new boyfriend, who is very shy, by the way. Hey y'all, it's Amy and... Michael. Michael makes more appearances on their TLC show than he did on Amy's YouTube channel in the early days. But on rare occasions, he would make an appearance and do a couples tag or a vlog. And interesting fact, these two have known each other for almost all of their lives and even had schoolyard crushes on each other as children. But they really reconnected again as adults. And the story of how they began dating is a doozy. And that took me a second to wrap my brain around. So cue the charts. Where do we meet? And like, how do we meet? The brother and sister in law. Yeah, like, his, my, bro my sister was dating his brother. And my brother was dating his sister. And I was dating him. As we all know, they are now a very happily married couple with an adorable baby. But of course, this was not without controversy. While they had a huge wedding ceremony on the show, they were actually officially married in 2019 at their local courthouse. Tammy ended up not attending her sister's original wedding, and fans questioned her about it so much so that she decided to make a video response. I didn't make it to the wedding. <clears throat> because... I'm having a lot of problem with my stomach right now. I think it's the med the the new diet medicine I'm on. This is the second month I've been on it, and uh, it's like my stomach is like hurting. And it's been upset. So I didn't want to go and throw up in the middle of the ceremony. 
you know, and then take the spotlight off of Amy. I know Amy was upset about it, but there's nothing I can do. I'd rather be safe than sorry. It is what it is. And this video was not well received at all. With comments like, I didn't go to the wedding because you're jealous. Sweet Tammy, please quit making excuses. It's obvious you are homebound. We have never seen you walk or even stand up. Please get help, please. Amy got married at the courthouse at the Justice of Peace's office. That takes like 15 minutes. So I'm starting to believe you just couldn't physically walk to go. This makes me really sad and worried for you. Please get help. But you kind of did steal her spotlight by your absence and the drama around it. Even though Amy was hurt by her absence, I think it's now all water under the bridge because Tammy did make up for her absence during Amy and Michael's wedding ceremony on the Thousand Pound Sisters in season one. While we know the direction that this happy couple made, now we need to turn our attention over to Tammy and we need to discuss the roller coaster on again, off again, on again, off again, the relationship between Tammy and Jerry. Now, these two have known each other for well over four years before the start of the TLC show. And for those who watch Tammy religiously, you'll know that these two are forever dating and then not dating. And then you start to get whiplash after a while. I'm, I'm with Jerry. I've been with Jerry for four years. Yeah, technically I'm single, but hey, it is what it is. Me and Jerry never broke up. I mean, we, yeah, I guess we did there for a little bit. Jerry's my boyfriend. Jerry's mine. That be mine. Jerry and I bro technically broke up uh, Thursday. Are you boyfriend and girlfriend? Uh, yep. People ask me if you're single or whatever. Technically, yes. But I did ask Jerry to be with me again. We're, I guess we're trying to work things out. I don't know what's going on with him. And Tammy is fiercely protective of Jerry and will defend him at all costs, even when they are in the midst of a breakup or broken up. I still love Jerry, but I'm not going to like sit here and can, you know dog him or anything. It is what it is. We still talk. He actually messaged me a few months ago. Jerry's mine. That be mine. And if you don't like it, then get off my life. Like, I ain't with nobody today. And it's apparent that Tammy is head over heels about Jerry. And she would often talk about how she wanted a very serious relationship with him. Ma, I miss my Jerry. I'm not gonna lie. I can't, like, I wish we lived closer. From where I live right now, we are, me and Jerry, we are eight hours away from each other, but, yeah, we'll figure out something. He said for Christmas he's going to try to see me, but I don't know with the way he works. Jerry's my heart, though. Her main goal was to have Jerry move in with her and especially be closer so that they could spend every day together as opposed to random contact on the internet and meeting up in person two times a year. I must still with my boyfriend how often does he? I can FaceTime him anytime I want to. Uh, I've seen him twice last year when we were in Georgia. <clears throat> I mean, he tells me he loves me and everything, but just won't commit. But I don't want to rush it, because if he's not ready, sorry, I just bit. I don't want to rush it, because if he's not ready, then that'll back him, you know, make him back off. But hey, 
We've been talking for three years now. He knows how he is. He says I'm crazy. Well, I am, but ain't we all? <laughs> I'm like, I'm ready for Jerry to move in with me. Like, I can't. I'm so ready. <laughs> Jerry was always hanging around in her live chats, regardless of if they were together or not. Look, Jerry in the room. Jerry just come in the room. Them and Jerry. Them and Jerry. <laughs> and Amy wasn't having it. She would subtly hint to Tammy that it was time for her to move on. Can I do a split screen? How am I doing a split screen? Amy's here. She's not on her phone. Can you still talk to him? Who? Jerry, yeah. Why not? Okay. A basis? She could. She got dogs. One huge reason was because once Jerry made his first appearance on the show, the internet quickly found out that he was a married man with seven children and five grandkids. And this was not news to Tammy. She was already very aware of the situation. You good, you good. I'm just tired of people like telling me, don't you know your man's married? I wasn't born last night. Yes, I know he's married. But do you know he's getting divorced? I didn't take him from her. He left on his own. How the heck is it cheating? Yeah, I want to tell you something about my boyfriend. Y'all think I'm stuck in the dark? I know he's married, and I don't care. Call me a homework if you want to. But if he ain't happy at home, then what's the problem, you know? Like, forget it. Do I like anime? I mean, okay, what I was saying about Jerry, he is married, yes. His wife knows me. She knows everything. She knows he was in the show. He knows she, I mean, we didn't hide nothing. We're still not hiding nothing. She's in the loop. I'm in the loop. And the thing is, he's, she is very sick. She's on dialysis and everything. And I mean, we're not, I mean, it's cool. You know, y'all gotta just, why y'all all up in my business sometimes? I'm like, really? Can't y'all just be happy for me sometimes? <laughs> but to me, it's the case of a slime bag man who plays several women against each other. Why? Because his ex-wife, Kaya, did an interview with the publication and she gave her side of the story. And according to her, she stated, we are married, but we are not together because he went on that show. He told me if I file for divorce, he will not sign papers. I don't think I can forgive him anymore. We have seven kids together. They are upset with him. So, if he's so in love with Tammy, why would he refuse to sign divorce papers? And why would he refuse to move in with Tammy to take the next step? To me, it sounds like he's playing both women. And as we know, at the time of this video, they are broken up. It would not surprise me at all if he ends up weaseling his way back into her life. Now, there was rumors across the internet with people speculating that Jerry may have been a secret feeder, and this was due to many reasons. One being Tammy's had a history with feeders in her dating past. Like, why would I want you to call me fat if we're trying to be in a relationship? Come on now, you're right. Weezing the feederism, which it means, which means he likes fat girls to get bigger. And eat, 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 eat. Yeah, but don't you call them But to him, but him calling them piggy or fatty is telling them that they're beautiful. Second, Jerry was always sending her foods and sweets for her to try on her mukbangs. Um, but I don't, I mean, I really don't eat a lot of junk food. Well, let me take that back. I don't eat a lot of sweets, like sugar, unless Jerry sends it to me. 
I got a friend that's going to send me some cheer wine from North Carolina. I've never had it because we can't get it here in Kentucky. And I'm going to review that. Actually, he's kind of my boyfriend, but yeah. And he wasn't supportive with her weight loss journey. And not only that, why is he hiding secret stashes of candy when they first met like it was an illegal substance or something? The whole thing just seems really fishy. And even though Tammy is probably heartbroken, the best thing she could do for herself, her life, and her sanity is to move on without him. She deserves better, and she deserves to have someone completely and totally devoted to her and her alone. Unfortunately, Tammy's dating life is not the only thing she received backlash and criticism about. The TLC show's narrative, scripted or not, subconsciously or not, painted Amy in a more favorable light than Tammy. And as the show brought out more and more critics, Tammy slowly started to retreat and stopped sharing most of her life on the internet. I'm fed up with all these stupid comments. You're gonna die. You're morbidly obese. You can't walk. You can't take care of yourself. You need a scooter. You need... Man, shut the... You know nothing about me. Tammy knew from an early age that her and Amy were destined for stardom. True story. When I was little, I always told myself, I told, always told my mom and Amy that we were going to be different from the rest of our family. We were going to be the ones to either marry or be with a, with a black, uh, African American person or be on TV. And I've done both. <laughs> As fate would have it, TLC approached them to do a show. Our followers from YouTube contacted TLC. At that time, there was a show called Family by the Tongue or Family of Tongue. I can't remember exactly the name of it. So, at first we were going to be on that show, but then TLC and all the, you know, people, the producers and everybody at TLC was like watching our YouTube videos and they loved how Amy and I interact with each other, you know, how, how we joke around, how real we are with each other. We tell people, you know, to tell each other, I mean, how it is, this and that, and then we're not afraid to be ourselves. So we ended up on our own show for the longest time. For the longest time, we didn't even have a name for our show. So they signed on to do one season, and it was a huge success. Probably bigger than they could have imagined. We haven't heard about season two, but we're already on Trendy. We're like top 20s in the Trendy. We were top 14 on cable. That's our ratings. And then we were number one on TLC. And when the show finally premiered, Tammy appeared extremely happy. What do y'all think of the of the, the show? Uh, the the did anybody watch it? The Thousand Pound Sisters on TLC. It came on last night. And a few episodes in, she even explained what it was like to start getting recognized in her hometown. When you walk out the door, people notice you and know who you are. It's kind of weird. What's weird is when I go to the hospital, the EMTs know exactly who I am and the people at the hospital. Tammy seemed really optimistic at first because it was a documented journey that she was going on with her sister. And I'm sure she envisioned a show where they would both be losing weight together and getting their lives on track. Never could she have imagined how the show ended up showing the dichotomy between the two sisters. And essentially, it was shown that there was one sister who was succeeding versus the other sister who was struggling. And I'm sure that is not what Tammy signed up for. And it was probably frustrating to see people rooting for her sister and being upset with her for failing. And as we already know, 
The sibling rivalry between these two runs deep. I love the attention. <laughs> when y'all tell me I'm better than Amy, oh my God, that just, that's, that just, <laughs> that melts my heart. <laughs> Cause I'm not used to it. I'm used to everybody's like, Amy's so great, Amy's this, Amy that. Man. And to add insult to injury, while viewers started to fall in love with Amy, many were getting upset with what they perceived to be mistreatment of Amy by Tammy. And this seemed to be a major point of contention in blogs, articles, and all across social media. Tammy even took out time to address some of these accusations. I mean, I get it. I do come off as like being mean and rude and everything to Amy, but he needs to, or people need to understand what goes on behind the camera. You know? Why, there's reasons why I get aggravated or mad at Amy. I don't just like pop off for no reason, you know? Unless I get a reason, you know? So she admitted that she takes out some of her frustrations on Amy, but according to Tammy, there is a lot that we don't know about that happens off camera. You say you admire my honesty, but yet you tell me I need to be nicer to Amy. But I wish y'all can find out what's going on behind the screen. I can tell y'all some ish that would break your heart. Like, seriously. While Tammy never confirmed exactly what was happening off camera, my guess is that she was frustrated by the amount of praise and weight loss that Amy was receiving. And she had convinced herself that she was putting in way more effort than Amy, and then she was getting frustrated by the entire process. And then you got Amy. Amy. I was just going to say it. I don't see how the heck Amy's losing all that weight and she eats way more junk food, not junk food, way more fast food than I do. She's always, every time Michael's off, she's always saying, or I'll call her, there was like two weeks, I swear, like no lie. I called her and she, I was like, what are you doing for like every day for like two weeks? I called her and she was like, I was like, what are you doing? She's like, we're going out to eat. I was like, what? Don't you ever cook? She's like, yeah, on the days Michael works. Really? And then when they do go out to eat, it's Chinese, pizza, cheeseburgers. <laughs> I, I just don't understand it. You know, the mind can play terrible tricks on us. And in Tammy's case, her inner saboteur was working overtime. And in the words of the great doctor now, the scale doesn't lie. People do. So I'm sure it's infuriating for Tammy to get advice from Amy when she feels as though she is doing more. And I think she just snaps because of it. She does. She digs in. I mean, I know she's trying to help, but some of the things she says and the way she says it doesn't help, you know? You felt bad for Amy. Well, honestly, if you listen, like, that's what I was trying to say in one of my videos. If you listen to the tone in our voices, if I just say, like, it's like saying bitch. We call each other bitch all the time, but we're sometimes, most of the time we're just playing around. And on top of all of this, the theme about feeling uncomfortable living with family is brought up again. And Tammy opens up why she doesn't want to live with Michael and Amy. I mean, I love Amy. Don't get me wrong. But there's just certain things. Okay. I love Amy and Michael. Don't get me wrong. And I love a little bit. But there's like... It's the feng shui, I guess. 
is the atmosphere. I don't like it over there. It has nothing to do with Amy and Michael. It's just, I don't know, I'm just not comfortable. And it's not just, I don't know, but have you ever been to, I mean, I'm sure you all have been to somebody else's house and you not be comfortable, like your in-laws or, I don't know, family. Tammy really started to receive backlash after fans felt she was being ungrateful for the help that Amy provided. And she truly seemed to be in denial about how much she depended on Amy on a daily basis. You know, people think I depend on Amy all the time. Yeah, there are certain things I do depend on Amy, like going to get my groceries or going to get me food and my medicine, paying my bills because she's my payee. And... My laundry. I can't do my laundry. I don't have a washer and dryer. So yeah, I do depend on Amy some. Before like bathing and well now I do, but before I didn't. And I've been living in my own house since June. But they're making it seem like I've been living here since like February or at the end of so. So the culmination of all these events left Tammy with a whole lot of critics and a new batch of haters that flocked to her channel. I got sent this a couple of days ago. Now I know what they're saying. Beware a pig. They call me a pig. So I'm going to thank the person for this. I know what I said in my post. I was like mad when I got it. I'm like hurt. And who wouldn't be? I mean, seriously, who wouldn't be get mad he get some bullcrap like that? I don't have to balance. Of course you didn't. But if it was me, I would understand, you know. Like, I thought they would be calling me a pig or something. But that just motivates me to lose weight even more. Call me a pig all you want, honey. Can I talk? I don't give Shut up, shit. <laughs> you don't. Anyways. And even in this clip, you can feel the tension in the room when Tammy makes her proclamation about her weight loss. Yeah, thank you for the motivation. Thank you for the push. I don't need y'all to tell me I'm not losing weight when I know I am. What? I didn't say nothing. No one that look. That was uncomfortable. You can feel the passive aggressiveness leaping through the screen. And it's apparent that Tammy feels alone and she seems a bit resentful that Amy is not making more of an effort to spend time with her. But it's cause I'm alone and I'm thinking about getting a puppy or a kitten. And if I do, I'm going to adopt them from a shelter. Just, just so I have somebody here in my house that will love me I can talk to them, play with them, and it's something that's going to stay here long with the two minutes. <laughs> so unfortunately, a culmination of all of the events, including the lack of weight loss, the treatment of Amy, the perceived lack of accountability. There were even rumors in early 2021 that Tammy had passed away, which she immediately addressed. I am not on life support. I'm at home. watching TV, living my best life on a budget. <clears throat> I, don't, I know where this reference is coming from, the show. Amy said something about me being on life support. I'm not on life support. Pull the plug, motherfuckers. I'm not dead. I told people are saying I'm dead when I'm not. Just because I stopped messaging so many people back all the time and stopped commenting and stopped posting doesn't mean I'm dead. I'm still live on TikTok. Mm. Seriously, you stop with this lying shit. What's, what do you get out of lying about me being dead? In addition, she was getting sick of all the criticism and the rumors and decided to address her haters in several videos. And she pretty much went off. God, people make me so fucking sick of y'all's attitudes and you expect me to just be poly perfect and miss pretty princess and not argue back? Oh, today. 
I'm gonna get the elephant out the room and talk about my weight. I'm fed up with all these stupid comments. You're gonna die. You're morbidly obese. You can't walk. You can't take care of yourself. You need a scooter. You need. Man, shut the. You know nothing about me. You're gonna die at a young age. Okay. I know this. You don't have to keep telling me. Okay? I'll be the first one to admit. I have a problem. Jesus. Okay, I know. Jesus, do you ever think that I might have health problems? That might be causing some? Of the reason I'm big? No! You just think I sit and overeat. Please. <coughs> so Tammy is pretty much backed away from most social media, but she does still appear on TikTok, singing songs and doing short clips, but there's no long-form videos. Amy, on the other hand, is still actively posting on her YouTube channel. And it's important to note that there's probably a whole hell of a lot that goes on behind the camera, and I'm sure that there's a lot more to the story. But I hope you were able to learn a little bit more about Amy and Tammy's life, and hopefully it will provide a better insight into their lives, behaviors, flaws, struggles that they're dealing with in their lives. We're all rooting for their health, success, peace, love, and happiness for both Tammy and Amy, and hopefully... My fingers are crossed that in the future, we finally get to witness Tammy's epic comeback story. So, don't worry guys, our adventure does not stop here. Meet me over on the next video and we'll start another deep dive.